Okay. Oops, you're probably seeing my presenter view. How's that? Is that good? Yep. Okay, we're going to be uh, talking about agent-based and hybrid modeling using a software called Vivarium. Um, we saw a little bit of hybrid modeling uh, within vCell just the last few talks. I don't think uh, there's been any discussion of agent-based modeling in this in this uh, uh, workshop, um, Aaron, uh, yes, yesterday we had a speaker who actually showed CompuCell three D and Copasi. So oh, fantastic! Okay, it's Pots model. Okay, so so this isn't going to be uh, the the first time presenting either of these methods. Um, and so you've had some introduction. Uh, okay, uh, so to to start. I think this is quite appropriate for the, the given um, workshop. There have been many different simulation methods developed over, over the, the preceding uh, decades uh, to, to capture the behavior of biological systems. And you've seen many of these. Um, deterministic non-spatial, stochastic non-spatial, uh, con uh, spatial continuous, spatial particles. I know you've seen all of these. Uh, there's there's also down here in the bottom, there's a lot of physical models out there that have been developed. These are uh, at, at different, different scales, different granularities. You can see here, I've pulled out three different kinds of simulations, uh, all of them for membranes. Uh, but, but on the left, you have a uh, very detailed uh, near atomistic, if not atomistic simulations of a, of a membrane protein with some membrane, uh, some coarse grained membranes, and then a very, very coarse grained membrane on the right. You also have some uh, in, a, a wide range of different multi-cell simulation frameworks. And so you've seen uh, yesterday uh, cell or pot style model, which is like this one on the, the left for multi-cell. Um, I'd like to to mention at this point that that uh, the different uh, simulation methods are more appropriate for given uh, biological systems. So depending on on the question that that you have and the type of biological system that you're studying, uh, some of these might be more appropriate than than others. And uh, and. And this is generally true. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's many different uh, phenomena in, in in biology, and there's different mathematics that are appropriate for the for those uh, for those different um, behaviors. And so, we might want to combine methods if we want to capture a biological system more comprehensively with with multiple subsystems. Um, and uh, we do this using what's called hybrid modeling. I have a definition here. Uh, hybrid modeling merges different mathematical frameworks to capture the, the multifaceted nature of biological systems. So you may combine deterministic with stochastic. We saw this done spatially by, by Jim. Um, you might want to cap. You might want to do non-spatial models for for some subsystems. Combine that with spatial models. Um, so, why? Uh, well, uh, again, no no single modeling approach can capture all of biology. Uh, it's, so thus far, uh, I'm I'm not sure it ever will. Uh, so so we need to we need frameworks that allow us to combine. Uh, and gain the more comprehensive understanding. Sorry for this super pixelated image. Uh, it didn't didn't look pixelated when I generated it this morning. Uh, here's an example of of two different uh, simulation methods. We have uh, in in the in the rectangles the processes. We have uh, enzyme kinetics might be ODE, uh, and then flux balance analysis is a steady state solution. So you can link these up by generating kinetic fluxes from the ODEs which set constraints on the flux balance analysis and then 
uh, re recalculate some steady state fluxes. And, and there's an, there's many examples of this kind of a thing happening. Typically, it's done within a, a simulation tool and might not even be ex explicitly described as a hybrid method. OK, another thing we might want to embed methods, one method within another. Uh, uh, biology is is a uh, hierarchical phenomena with compartments within compartments within compartments, and there there may be uh, different mathematical frameworks that best represent individual uh, uh, layers of that hierarchy. So we use agent based models for for this kind of nesting of methods. Typically, agent based models are only one one level down. So you'll have an environment. Over here, you can see the environment at the top. Inside of the environment, you have chemical fields in this example, and you might have a PDE uh, to, to uh, solve the chemical fields and how they diffuse and reactions. Um, one level down, uh, in this example, we have cells. Uh, cells each have their own internal model, in this case, a rule-based model. That that operate in parallel, but can connect and, and in this case maybe uh, sense their external chemical fields. This is actually also quite quite similar to to what Jim showed with the the particle and PDE model. Um, so why why do this? Uh, agent based models allow us to study uh, emergence. Uh, given given uh, simple cells interacting with each other. Uh, leads to to novel uh, complex behaviors that we couldn't get from just a single cell on its own or single agent. Uh, heterogeneity is quite nice to study. We can replace uh, these different methods, uh, you know, maybe like a mutation. And you, so you want to remove one one met one model and replace it with a sub model of a different type and see how that's going to affect the collective behavior. Uh, there's also quite uh, scalable, both computationally and for um, modeling frameworks. So uh, agents can be used to represent cells, molecules, organisms, or other entities, depending on, on the uh, behavior that you're interested in. Now, there's many different simulation tools, both for hybrid and for agent-based. I'm showing you some of the, the more popular agent-based simulators. So it sounds like you might have seen CompuCell 3D. Yesterday, some other popular ones are Morpheus, uh, FizzyCell, NetLogo. Um, each of these is uh, really, really great at what it does, uh, but it it does a, a, a narrow domain of agent-based modeling. Most typically, there's there's a specific hard-coded implementation of, of a hybrid method or an agent-based model. Uh, I think these are all uh, agent-based like models. And um, uh, well, that if if so if you want to use that specific agent-based model methodology, you're in good shape. You can take one of these simulators uh, and work within its confines. Uh, however, if you want to slightly augment a uh, the the particular method, you might want to add a new, module um, that that doesn't exist within the simulator, you're typically quite out of out of luck there. Um, there's also incompatibilities between different simulator tools. Uh, the algorithms, a lot of times the the glue that holds modeling methods together aren't um, aren't explicitly defined and and they're they're in the code and don't don't exactly know how, the, the glue is implemented. And so different software tools uh, connect methods in different ways that are hard to reproduce. And, and so uh, it, even though, for example, CompuCell 3D and Morpheus use a similar agent-based method, they're, they're uh, uh, the same uh, model does not uh, load it into each one, doesn't generate the same behavior. And so you don't explicitly uh, account for how things connect. Uh, this is why um, I and my uh, and a, and a, a 
not a great team of collaborators developed this, this software called Vivarium. Uh, it aims to be a general purpose software for connect, connecting different models into a hierarchical network. Um, and so we the aim here is to be able to capture any kind of hybrid model or agent-based model. There's, there's some visual language that we've developed here, and so I'll introduce it real quick. Uh, processes are shown as these rectangles. These are the, the actual um, uh, uh, components of the algorithm that drive it forward in time. These are the functions. Uh, they have ports. Ports are the inputs and outputs to the, the model. Uh, here, they're explicitly defined. So you, you, you can inspect a given process and know what the ports are, what types of states can be connected to that process, um, and then you can plug them together. Uh, a store is is um, what holds the the states of the system external to the process. And this can be of any data type. There's a flexible type system that lets you define uh, new data types on the fly if needed, uh, and the only constraint is that a given port needs to define the same type for it to connect to a store. So, so uh, assuring that things are compatible with each other. When you connect things together, uh, processes and stores together, you get a composite, which, um, which uh, here we're showing a composite that has a hierarchy. So you have a, a store with two stores inside and different processes. This might be an this might be an agent-based model where process three is an environmental model and processes one and two are are cellular, perhaps. Finally, uh, Vivarium runs a uh, it orchestrates how these processes unfold in time. We'll, we're going to see this a little bit. And so uh, each each process runs in parallel with uh, a synchronization step that uh, that uh, synchronizes what they see, the inputs and outputs of each process with the external state held in the stores, which lets the different processes communicate with each other. Okay, uh, now that you're familiar with the, the, the visual language, uh, a few examples. Uh, of, of how it's used to build hybrid simulations. Here we have a stochastic transcription uh, model and a deterministic translation model. So an ODE and a, uh, and a stochastic algorithm. Uh, in order to connect these, you need an adapter process that converts the, the type of data that, that the stochastic simulation runs on, which is counts of a molecule, uh, to the deterministic simulation, which operates on concentrations. Uh, so every time that the stochastic transcription process updates its RNAs in this case, this adapter converts to, to uh, concentration so that the deterministic system can proceed and vice versa. It, it, uh, it can translate the other way too. So this is this is what's typically called the glue code inside of most hybrid simulators that this isn't made explicit. It might be a line buried deep in the code. But here, because we have modularity, we can we can uh, flexibly plug things together in a way that that uh, scales much, much better uh, than than more traditional methods. Next, we can see how hierarchical embedding uh, enables multiple spatial scales in this case. So we have, um, I'm taking this the, the model I showed you on the previous uh, slide. So this one over here, which has stochastic transcription. And by the way, I didn't point out the, the simulation results. You can see that the RNA has some stochasticity to it. And uh, despite that, the protein looks pretty smooth, but if you were to zoom into this, you'd, you'd, you'd see the stochastic effect coming through to the protein as well. And so we're so so in the next slide, I, I'm going to take this entire standalone hybrid uh, simulation that uses a, a sto stochastic and ODE and nest it underneath 
in a hierarchy. Here we have the same processes you saw before, um, but they're all under uh, this zero, that's the ID of the cell. And then we hold all the cells under this top level store called cells. We also have a field store. So this is where the chemical fields are held. And uh, so 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 this over here in in the, the, the top, these are the this is the environmental model. It's also a hybrid model because we have a, a diffusion process, which is a PDE that that updates the fields. And we have a multi-body process, which is a, a rigid body uh, physics that um, that controls the the shape and location of the of the cells. So these individual cells don't don't know where they are. They don't know where they're located. They just see the external state. We also have this additional division process that waits for a volume to hit a certain threshold and then triggers kind of like a rule based reaction. It triggers uh, division within the cell. So 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 division will wait for this volume to hit a, a critical threshold and then send a reaction to say divide zero. Okay, let me show you what this looks like when it's when it runs. Okay, so a hybrid agent based model with um, here you're not seeing the PDEs in the environment. You'll see those later. Uh, but we have PDEs, rigid body physics, stochastic simulation. You can see that that the cells, uh, uh, even though it started off as one cell, um, they they result in this kind of heter heterogeneous uh, uh, population with different sized cells and different internal concentrations. That that's all coming through because of this stochastic transcription module that's running in there. Okay. You ah. Okay. The the orchestration. Uh, this is what this is. Uh, how how uh vivarium unfolds the system in time. Uh, it uses a, a discrete event simulation engine. Uh, keeping track of each process. Here we're looking at these two processes. Uh, for simplicity, uh, you can so you can imagine these all kind of lined up, where you have all the processes. They all want to unfold in time. Here, this is represented by the arrow going to the right. So each each process uh, needs to unfold in time, and we have this this. Uh, here, let me. This is actually easier to do this way. So there's global time for the system. Uh, which is proceeding. That's the line that I'm currently dragging uh, across the the figure, um, and each process uh, has an update scheduled. We use a, a scheduling uh, uh, framework. So uh, stochastic, the stochastic process has has told the engine that it it's prepared to update at this time point, which we're now crossing. Uh, it's on the schedule. And when that happens, the orchestra, the Vivarium engine retrieves the update from the process, passes it external to this shared store. Um, it reads all the states that the stochastic transcription process requires, passes them back through the port. Then it asks the stochastic transcription process, how long do you need for your next update? Um, if that's a reasonable uh, time, it puts gets put on the schedule. So that's a, this next tick mark has been scheduled. We're gonna we're gonna get the update from this process when that time comes, and uh, and then it's set off in parallel. So so the stochastic transcription process will will continue running, and meanwhile we uh, we can go to the next event scheduled event, which is up here on top, um, and we just repeat this same process over and over and over again, get the processes, go to the next scheduled event, retrieve the update, apply it, schedule the next event and continue. There's um, there's all kinds of other uh, uh, methods to 
I make sure that these are adaptive time steps, but I won't get into that right now. Okay. Uh, there's an additional type of, of process or uh, which, uh, which we call steps. These are non-time dependent processes. So they don't, it, it doesn't make sense to run them for an interval of time. Um, and, uh, but many, many models, by the way, are, are not time dependent processes. So, so to be a true hybrid framework, we need to incorporate both uh, temporal processes and non-temporal processes. And so this is how we do it here. Between the time steps, here you can see that there's these temporal process goes in time. And, and I'm, I'm depicting here the, the, the steps between time. Uh, so we might have uh, processes change the counts of a given molecule. And then we want a model to recalculate the mass of the whole cell as a result. And uh, so uh, the calculation of mass from counts is a non-temporal thing. It should happen instantaneously when you have a count. And so we'll we'll uh, we'll run the the mass step, which recalculates the mass, and maybe the the a shape step, which takes the mass and calculates a new shape as a as a result. Um, and uh, once those are all done, the simulation can proceed. Uh, we can also use these steps in a workflow. Here, I'm showing a, a, a workflow. It's a, there's a directed acyclic graph of dependencies. So mass and shape can, in this case, run in parallel. They don't depend on each other, but division requires both of them to have run before it determines whether it's time to divide. So, so we can we can actually do a, this is this is a very flexible framework that lets us do a lot of things if we if we get dependencies figured out we can run entirely non temporal simulations using only steps uh, in a workflow. Okay, so a few more examples. Uh, I'm going to be getting progressively more complex in the in the demo. Uh, here we have uh, a a, um, a vivarian process for COBRA, which is a flux balance analysis simulator, very popular simulator. And so we've put it inside of this process over here. Um, there's additional processes. Uh, these are these are uh, adapter or here, they're called driver steps that allow us to make the COBRA uh, uh, flux balance analysis simulator into what's called a dynamic flux balance analysis because it, uh, these recalculate the mass and and uh, and and can then calculate a steady state over and over again. And so you can see here on the right, you know, this is all log scale. So you don't you don't see the dynamics very well. Uh, but but we have um, uh, a, a genome scale metabolic model that uh, the internal species can change because of the, the dynamic FBA and external, uh, you can see here the third store from the left holds an external state. And these uh, also change. You can see some secretions as uh, in this case, carbon dioxide is being secreted into the environment. Uh, uh, as a byproduct of the the cell's metabolism, and and the the cell uh, grows. Uh, flux balance analysis, dynamic flux balance analysis, for, uh, is is good at generating a, a growth rate. Okay, the next process we have Bioscrape. This is a, a, a pretty generic SBML simulator like Coposi. Uh, in future examples, we'll have Coposi. Uh, and and we've actually already integrated Coposi and Vivarium, but but I have an, an old example and slides prepared uh, for Bioscrape. So here, a Bioscrape can run in either deterministic mode or stochastic mode for for this. Uh, this is uh, the lack a model of the lack operon. Um, and what to notice here is we have external glucose and external lactose. 
external glucose, we start off very low here and it depletes. Um, once it depletes, uh, there's uh, a transient uh, before the, the lac operon RNA is expressed, um, beta -galac uh, galactosidase is expressed soon afterwards, the, the protein uh, that's uh, in the lac operon. And the lactose permease is a transporter that brings lactose into the cell. And so as soon as this starts to get expressed, the external lactose is taken up by the cell. You can also see this stochastically done. Uh, here, the, the RNA expression is, uh, uh, you can see these very small expression events. It doesn't, so small counts of RNA are in there leading to a more prolonged uh, time before we have the sufficient lactose permeus. And so you can see the external lactose take takes some time to be taken up, but it does eventually get taken up. Okay, uh, one more. Uh, this is uh, the 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 model we put into the environment. Uh, we looked at it briefly before. Uh, this is itself a hybrid model. So we have the uh, PDE-like diffusion and the rigid body physics called multibody. Um, diffusion operates on the fields. You can see here, this is a very discretized simulation. I, I have a high concentration of glucose at the top and then it'll diffuse uh, through the, the field over the course of the simulation. And um, agents, there's agents held inside of this door. So it just has their location, their orientation, their length. Um, and so we, we start off with three agents and the multi-body process makes sure that it, it, it calculates how they push up against each other. and. And um, it, we can also add some uh, thermal uh, noise to the multibody so that there's some fluctuations to their to their uh, position. Okay, connect them all up over here. Uh, I won't go into the details, even though I could and have and would be very happy to. Uh, but but there there's some um, uh, the 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 way that things are wired together. There's a there's a, a reasoning to to this behind it that lets uh, the the inputs of of one model uh, be influenced by the outputs of another and and so forth. Okay, but I'll I'll show you the results. So we we connect everything up, and then we run the vivarium engine, and here is what we have as a as a result of that. Uh, this hybrid agent-based simulation blends properties of all of the input simulators that we looked at. You can see aspects of them all over. Uh, so you can see the the, the, the diffusion um, field uh, in 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 the the fields over here, bottom left. The in the uh, rigid body physics uh, in which these cells have been growing and pushing each other apart. Um, the, their growth is driven by the flux balance analysis. Uh, so uh, so on, on its own, the cells wouldn't grow and divide. You can see the stochastic expression of the RNA leading to a, a very uh, stochastic popul uh, heterogeneous population of cells. Um, over here on the right, you can see you can see where uh, that that these all have different, levels of lactose permease. Um, the glucose flux across the colony, there's much more glucose flux. So these are actively taking up glucose on the on along the periphery. And that's because yes, the 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 PDEs in the environment have made it so that uh, that there's a gradient. Uh, and, and so the outer cells are experiencing a higher uh, a level of glucose, and that that in turn uh, uh, drives their behavior. Um, again, I could go into great great detail from what you see here. Uh, what what you should take from it is is that that the hybrid simulation um, achieve is a 
is a new mathematical object that uh, wouldn't be possible. You can't do this with the individual simulators. Um, so this is an example of, of uh, different aspects of biology, each having a more appropriate simulation method. And we capture that, connect them all up, run a, a large hybrid simulation. Okay, to, to give you a taste for how complex this can get, I'm going to quickly go through uh, over a whole cell model that we built in Vivarium uh, called Vivarium E. coli. And um, this is something on the, the left, I have the, uh, the full Vivarium diagram for a single cell. I know you can't see it at all because the there's too many details and the and uh so I blew up this region in the middle for you to to take a look at uh here you can see five of the processes and there are 12 total processes including chromosome structure chromosome replication um metabolism is a flux balance analysis module uh complexation is a stochastic uh, uh module Equilibrium is a steady state module. Um, chromosomes are modeled as agents. Uh, uh, well, the, they're, the polymerases on the chromosomes are agents and they move, move around. There's a circular chromosome. So each of them has a position and can move around like an agent. Um, 19,000 parameter values, 10,000 equations. It's now freely available. Um, at, at this at this website, uh, uh, open open source license to it. Uh, you can download it. It runs, uh, and we've as as a consequence of going into Vivarium, we brought it from a forty minute runtime to a seven minute runtime because each of these processes can run in parallel, and so uh, simulation time is actually great greatly reduced. This is a summary plot of of all of the different molecules uh, uh, in, in these categories summed up. And so you can get their total mass. Uh, we, we're calculating mass between every update and, and uh, track mass. Uh, this is actually a, a fantastically well mass balanced simulation. Okay, we can take this entire thing that I'm showing you on the left. This is a composite simulation and uh, Composites are themselves uh, process instances, so we can take those and, and plug them into a hierarchy. So, so each of these uh, boxes that you see has a whole cell model running inside of it in parallel. Uh, and and we've taken oh, this is a should be a rigid body physics, not soft body physics, um, but using the same uh, environmental scale hybrid simulator that we used before we we just this is plug and play this is like legos we 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 uh we put it in there and, and run in so here we have a truly massive simulation where each of the cells you see is running its own whole cell model internal to it and each of these is running in parallel on a on a google cloud instance with uh with 200 cores um this uh, this would have been quite impossible to do otherwise. I should I uh, would like to to say it took it took a lot. Of, we had to invent a, a a software to make this possible. Okay, um, same simulation I showed you before. We can we can now take a look inside of the cells and uh, fluor quote unquote fluorescently tag some proteins. Um, there's, uh, over, over a thousand proteins. I'm just showing you two. And, uh, this, this will give you a sense of the heterogeneity that arises when, when we run a, a population, um, of whole cell models. Uh, if we were to track only one cell at a time, uh, it would, it would not be, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to, to, to see this kind of distribution across the, the, um, the phenotypes. Okay, next thing that we do, we can, so so here I'm just showing you the, the relative abundance of these different proteins. 
because the, the whole cell model is very good at counting molecules, but we need to add function uh, so that that molecules are, aren't just being counted, but they do something. And so here we, we add a few more processes uh, to model the response of tetracycline and, uh, and ampicillin. These have very different mechanisms of action. Here on the right, I'm gonna show you a simulation that introduces ampicillin into the environment. So you're about to see ampicillin injected into the environment. There it is in black. And, um, and the mechanism of action leads to the, uh, the, the uh, sorry, this is actually um, tetracycline. So it leads to the, the ribosome getting kind of jammed and it can't grow any, any longer. So the, these cells that are in gray have stopped growing. And um, and we actually, we wait for, for uh, them to stop growing and then we can remove all the internal processes and just leave the body kind of like a husk uh, running in the, in the environment without any internal uh, processes, so uh, kind of like an optimization. But you can see that some cell, due to the heterogeneity, some of the cells kept on growing. The mechanism of action, they, they had the, the right uh, proteins to respond to the, the antibiotic. Okay. Um, finally, uh, we have been working to combine um, many existing simulators together with, uh, with Vivarium. This is uh, part of the biosimulators project happening here at UConn. Um, there's, there's many uh, different simulation tools with, within this registry, quality controlled, uh, reproducible simulation tools. And, and by developing an, uh, a shared interface between them, uh, they're all gonna be pluggable and combinable with Vivarium so we can make a range of different hybrid simulations and agent-based simulations using existing uh, tools rather than having to re-implement them ourselves or um, or having having uh, tools go out of date, for example. Uh, th this, this will keep everything up to date using the most recent versions. All right, and that's, that's it for me. Thank you very much. I, I put up some acknowledgments here for people who helped with the core vivarium development in the E. coli model. Um, Feel free to contact me with any questions or if you want to be involved, want to use Vivarium or 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 have any anything if, if you uh if you disagree, also feel free to contact. Uh, I'm putting I put here a, a picture that I drew um of uh depicting multiple scales in biology. And um this this motivates the the research that that I do in the development of Vivarium. Uh, since biology is so truly multi-scale, uh, shouldn't our simulations also be? Um, that That's what we're trying to do. So again, thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. I uh, I don't have enough time for a demo. I had a demo prepared in case in case I I ended early. Um, uh, so maybe I'll I'll actually I'll put. I'll put a link to the demo if anyone wants to take a look at it later. And so let me just pull this up. Um, I have a Jupyter notebook here that I was gonna run through. I actually just reran it this uh, this morning, uh, not or this afternoon, and everything's still running. Haven't touched it in over two years, so I'm. I, you know, Python doesn't run out of date too fast. Um, th there you go. Uh, you can check that out in the chat. Happy to take any questions. So you don't have to have Jupyter Notebook installed for this to work? For, you, you don't need Jupyter Notebook for Vivarium, no. It's well, Python-based. Um, if you want to read, so so the, the link I sent, uh, you can you can just browse it. That's that's uh, on on the web. If you wanted to rerun it, then then you would need Jupyter Notebook. Right. Okay. 
it's been mostly a Python Python based um, development. the The idea is is to is to first uh, make it accessible to to developers and that that want to build hybrid simulators. And uh, we've been increasingly moving towards a friendlier and friendlier API. A lot of people look at the the diagrams I show and and ask for an interactive diagram where you can just plug the boxes together and and run that and that that's something that's certainly possible and not not a far stretch of the imagination but for now i uh, it's uh you need you need to do some coding sure. any questions from anyone yeah. So, 